in swimming. And these are the eight fastest in the world in the finals of the Olympics of 1968. In lane one, John Nelson of the United States. And in lane four is, or lane two rather, is Mike Burton of the United States, a man who holds the 400 gold medal. And here is his chief adversary tonight. He'll be swimming in lane five, Guillermo Echeverria, national hero of Mexico, going for his first gold medal, the second gold medal for Mexico during these games. They are in the hands of the starter. 1,500 meters. 30 lengths of the pool. And off they go to one of the most grueling tests that man can endure. And the question here, Mary Rose, is who's going to take it out first? And it looks like Mike Burton is waiting, wasting no time whatsoever. Mike Burton got off the blocks very quickly, and he is putting in some fast strokes now. I think Burton has to be considered the favorite in this event, especially after his 400 swim. It was a 409 which at sea level translates to well underneath the world record. And turning first is Guillermo Echeverria in lane five. The lanes numbered one through eight from the bottom to the top of your screen. Burton is in two, Echeverria is in five. And Echeverria looks like he's going to take it out in the first hundred very fast. Working with us also is Don Scholender, whom you met just a moment ago. And Don, are you surprised at uh, Echeverria going out so quickly? Yes, I am. He's using uh, quite a bit of leg kick this early, and I, I don't know how this will hurt him. Of course, he loses at altitude, so uh, he shouldn't get too tired, but he is using his legs early. Look at that, a one minute and four tenths clocking at 100 meters. Exceptionally fast. I think this might uh, hurt Mike Burton a little bit. I don't know what he's thinking right now, but I'm sure he's somewhat upset. Well, I'm sure, Murray, that he's taking a look at Echeverria. We have our arrow on Echeverria right now, and Burton is in lane two, and uh, he is breathing on his left side, so in other words, breathing out to his left, and he has a good look at Echeverria all the time. And Echeverria has a good look at him. It looks like Mike Burton has grown up with Echeverria now. I don't know why, why, why Echeverria went out quite that fast. This is a difficult thing to do at the best of times in 1500, but particularly at altitude. And there they are, in lane two and lane five. The two men who have met twice before, each holds one victory over the other. This is the classic rubber match, and of course it couldn't come at a more dramatic time, the finals in the 1,500 meters in the Olympic Games. What I think Echeverria is trying to do is use reverse psychology on Burton. He expected Burton to take it out fast and break up the field, so he is trying to do the same thing to Burton. Let's watch the clock at 200 meters. It is 2.06.8. Gentlemen, are you impressed? Very much so. Uh, Mike uh, saw it's really out there, and of course now it's gone after him, and I think he'll begin to move out a little bit right now. After watching the track, I think Echeverria had to be considered as a, a strong favorite because the people who were living at altitude seemed to do very well. But uh, he's a very erratic swimmer. He's been swimming rather strangely in the Olympic Games so far. He didn't qualify for the 400, and then he scratched out the 200, which was probably a wise choice because he doesn't have as much speed for the 200 as he should have. Perhaps you saw Burton on the left of your screen there take just a little bit of a look over in lane five, almost a deliberate look at Echeverria before he went into his turn. Mike went into his turn, pushed off, and now he's coming back, and he is about a half a body length ahead of Echeverria. There's Mike Burton. And on the right, just now coming into view, is Echeverria. In the middle, three lanes are Bruff and White of Australia. Burton is in two, Bruff is in three, White is in four, Echeverria is in five. In six is Kinsella of the United States, and the clocking at 300 meters is 312.5. Uh, Greg Bruff is beginning to move up a little bit on the leaders at this point, and Mike Burton is beginning to make a break. They can't let him make too much of a break. If he gets about three or four body lengths on the field, it's going to be very difficult for them to catch Mike Burton, I think. There's a beautiful psychological advantage once you get that much of a lead in the 1500, particularly with Mike Burton, because he does not fade towards the end of the race. Mike told me earlier today that uh, if he is ahead, he will try to press that advantage and lengthen it out. And this is what he's doing right now, of course. That arrow was to show Greg Bruff, whom, as Murray Rose pointed out, was moving up on the field, but Mike Burton has moved out to a pretty good lead. His World record time is 16.085. So right now, the way it stands, as they come to the end of 400 meters, it's Mike Burton of the United States, Guillermo Echeverria of Mexico, and in lane three, Greg Brock, a 17-year-old from Australia. 
We'll be back with more of the 1500 meters freestyle final from the Olympic Games in just a moment. States has set a blistering pace through the first 800 meters of the 1500 meters final. Mike Burke currently in first place. In second place from the United States, the 16-year-old schoolboy from Oak Brook, Illinois, John Kinsella, is swimming in lane six. In third place, the 17-year-old from Australia, Greg Brough. In fourth place, also from Australia, Graham White. And falling back into fifth place and trying to hold on to that is Guillermo Echeverria, because Ralph Hutton of Canada is pressing him for fifth. So right now, let's get a word with Murray Rose about the strategy so far that Mike Burton has shown, and also Don Scholander may have a comment. Well, Burton has done just what he set out to do, break up the field completely. I think the only swimmer that's capable of giving him a race now is Kinsella. Kinsella has been beating him consistently in workouts, but Burton always seems to get the edge in a race situation. But Kinsella is beginning to make up ground on Burton, I think. At the end of 900 meters, 9.55-1, as you can see, those are the only two men right now seemingly in contention. With Greg Brough of Australia, who has a fine finishing gig along with his teammate Graham White just turning. Here is Mike Burton. Burton just did nose out Kinsella in the national championship at 1,500 meters in Lincoln. Both of you recall that. Remember that, Don? You were there. Quite an exciting race. Mike and John have been training very hard for this. You'll notice that Mike is holding 107 the whole way, and it's a very consistent swim, and I think this is what is enabling him to stay out so far ahead right now. No one is going to catch him unless they can start throwing one fives, which would be very, very difficult. And here he comes back. That shot you had before uh, was of John Kinsella, this young 16-year-old from Illinois, who really is a, a demon for punishment. Here he is. You want to analyze his stroke, gentlemen? You're the expert. I think he has a fairly uh, classic stroke, really. He doesn't drag his legs as much as Mike Burton does. But then again, he doesn't overkick. He's a, a fairly classic 1,500-meter swimmer, depending upon his arms most of the way and doing a sort of semi-drag kick, I think. Almost all of the swimmers seem to have uh, reduced their kicks now, and hardly anybody is kicking hard. I think Mike Burton is getting some beautiful turns. He seems to roll into his turns very easily, whereas Kinsella and some of the other swimmers have to work them a lot harder and, and lose a lot of uh, energy doing so. And Mike Burton, at the end of 1,000 meters with 500 to go, has a large lead over this field, but anything can happen in 500 meters. Stroking his way to victory, as he hits the wall here, he will have 150 meters to go in the 1500 meter finals. Closest to him is John Kinsella of the United States. You'll notice there is a swimmer alongside of Mike Burton. That is John Nelson, but he has lapped him, and Kinsella is about 20 meters behind. There you see him. He'll just be making his turn now. The Mexicans came tonight to cheer, but unfortunately for them, Echeverria is in sixth place right now in the standings. The way it looks with about 100 meters and let's say 15 extra runs to go, Mike Burton of the United States, John Kinsella of the United States, Greg Brough of Australia, Graham White of Australia, then Ralph Hutton of Canada, and here is Echeverria in sixth place, and the bell lap has sounded for Mike Burton. I'm sure that both Don Scholander and Murray Rose have been absolutely stunned by the pace that Burton has made. You've really got to respect Burton. It takes a lot of courage to go out that fast, particularly at altitude, because you know when you get to this part of the race, it's going to hurt a lot. And he had to overcome a psychological disadvantage at altitude. He never swam well at altitude before this year, but he spent a lot of time in Colorado Springs, and this is the result now. Echeverria, I think, tried to upset him a little bit by setting such a blistering first 100 meters. But Mike, being the veteran that he is, did not let it upset him. And he swam a beautiful race. His stroke has been perfect. His leg power is just tremendous. He has held one sevens the whole way, although now he's picking it up, bringing it home. I think he's from a fantastic race. You'll notice how he uses uh, his powerful arms to stroke through the water, very seldom using much of a kick. He uses his feet and ankles and legs more as a stabilizer to keep him in the water. He is only 10 meters from the finish, and what a victory this will be for Mike Burton. He has won the gold in the 400, and the crowd here gives him a tremendous roar for his overwhelming victory in the 1500. Getting the silver over in lane six will be John Kinsella of the United States. That was John Nelson in the foreground of your picture. He has another lap to go. And Greg Brupp of Australia in lane three, a 17-year-old, will get the bronze medal. He's just coming into view now. A fellow Australian, Graham White, will finish fourth. 
Ralph Hutton of Canada is in lane seven. He will finish in fifth place. And Guillermo Echeverria, who has to be a big disappointment tonight, is still 25 meters from the finish line, and he will finish a distant sixth. And the fans are starting to get on him, I think, just a little bit. It's interesting that the other Mexican in the race is beginning to catch Echeverria, and I think all of Mexico is very disappointed in Echeverria's performance. Well, I'll say this. As he finishes the race, he touches out. Gave as much as he could, undoubtedly. But the Mexican fans who came here tonight to see another gold medalist crowned did not see it as Echeverria finished sixth. Alanis finishes in seventh place. But they did have their moment of glory, gentlemen. They had it when Felipe Munoz surprised the world with his victory in the 200-meter breaststroke. And now as Echeverria is going out, we actually hear some jeers. That's unfortunate. That's the, the end of the wall. Didn't waste any time. He's showing he's not tired. He has to that hard a race. He just touched and got right out. People are very disappointed in him. You've got to feel sorry for him, though. There's a tremendous amount of pressure on him here, and he just hasn't swam well. He didn't peak right, and something is certainly wrong with him. And there's the man whom all America can be proud of right now. Mike Burton of the United States setting a new Olympic record. He swam it in 1638.9. If you take the 25% less oxygen factor at altitude, you realize what a tremendous time that was. And in second place was John Kinsella of the United States, 16-year-old schoolboy from Illinois, and in third place, Greg Brough of Australia. That's the story of the 1,500 meters, the United States winning the gold and the silver.